We've well, seen them. We we we've seen them year in or not year in a year out. Let me let me pause. We've seen him game in game out this year, with the exception of Week One, go missing time and time again. We've seen multiple stat lines where he has one tackle. We've seen multiple times he's missing tackles in the backfield. We've seen him be damn near a ghost in the pass rush game. And then, you know, we have a situation like on Sunday in the third quarter where can't control his emotions. Now, if the, if bro called him a nigger at the beginning of the fucking game, then he should have he, he, he should have got kicked out there. But because you get your ass beaten, because you ain't making no plays, I feel like that contributed more in the third quarter to you slapping the shit out of bro that really you said by your own account the smoke really wasn't even intended for. Yeah, I mean, I also think it's a lack of – I mean, at this point, it, you don't have anything to play for if you're the Carolina Panthers. So I'm not going to be as quick to to suppress my temper when I get on the field. I might just smack the shit out of everybody I see on that bitch. I mean, but to answer your question, is it hurting the stock? That's a hard question for me to answer because I'm at the point where I could care less about his stock. I mean, when we had a chance to get something for him, we didn't capitalize on him. So what what kind of stock? So what what is his number? What is his number? What, well, hold on. Just real quick. What are you willing to offer him right now based on what we've seen this season? I mean, the nigga can't even get Max Crosby money. Yeah, I was about to say he doesn't. He doesn't even get that Max Crosby number anymore. What? What was that? Twenty. Twenty three and a half. Yeah, I mean, so you might get twenty one out of me. Twenty. That's not going to work. What? What are you willing to give him? He's going to get more than that. Um, From who? That's just what the market dictates. Okay. For a premier edge rusher, but I got, I got some thoughts on that. Okay, well, give your but thoughts and tell me. Well, tell me your number first, and then give me your thoughts. My number, like, uh, uh, you asking from what perspective? As the Carolina Panthers? Yes. Or just a, okay, yes, as the Carolina, Carolina Panthers. Mm, I might let him walk. I know it sounds crazy, but I, I don't even oh. think I'm willing to offer him a contract at this point because bring of the mic, yeah, bring the because mic. of what I've seen from him. Um, quite frankly, like I'm very, I'm very disappointed in Brian Burns this year. Um, very high expectations coming into it. No, it's a contract year. I was expecting like somewhere north of like double digit sacks, um, like at least 13. I uh, was expecting to be, I was expecting him to be a leader in like the voice of this defense. And we knew the offense would be slow to start, but we thought the defense would be able to hold it down to some degree. Um, and none of that, none of that transpired. Brian Burns has looked like complete garbage this year. Uh, low, low effort on way too many plays. And then to go out and get ejected on Sunday is just like the cherry on top for me. I'm kind of done with it, man. I walk. We can't get nothing for you anymore. I don't really know if I, you don't. You clearly don't want to be here. I don't want you to be here. Walk. We're rebuilding. Yeah, that's what I. That, that's what I mean by what stock because everything that we could have got for you, we we pissed that chance away. And then coming into the off season, based off the production that I seen this year. There's no way I can drop a bag on you. There's no way. Not logically when I have other guys I have to pay. When I have to pay a Derrick Brown, when I have to pay a Frankie Louvu, which sounds crazy, I have to pay a Frankie Louvu over Brian Burns. Like, that sounds crazy to the average person, but based off a production standpoint, then that's something that has to happen. And so, and do you don't even want to franchise him. Like yeah. you don't even want to tag him because you almost can't even use your tag say, on him. If you tag you him, you're going to be Brown. too much money. It's yeah. going to be you're going to be paying him way too much. Yeah, yeah, and, and I mean, I was talking to Kenny about this. Uh, one of our buddies, Eagles fan, but we were having an in depth conversation this morning, um, and I just named four players that are up for a contract for the Carolina Panthers defensively: Brian Burns, Derek Brown, Jeremy Chin, Frankie Louvu. Realistically, you can only keep two out of those four names, maybe three if you decide to use one of your tags. Or, excuse me, if you decide to use your tag on one of those guys. And it's just like, unfortunately, to me personally, Brian Burns should be the guy out. Yeah, he would damn near have to be the first one to walk based off of what I've seen. And I was, 
Jeremy Chin, he kind of gets a pass because he's been dealing with injury. But I think the games that he has played, he's looked very solid. It's not a lack of effort when it comes. It's never been a lack of effort when it comes to Jeremy Chin. Right. It's more so of like. They don't we know don't, what to do yeah, with Yeah, which is dumb as fuck in my opinion. But it's more so, yeah, we don't have a scheme for you. We don't know what to do with you. But it's never been a lack of effort. And with Brian Burns, it's starting to become a lack of effort. And which this is something that I've been vocal about for weeks now where I thought it seems like he just doesn't want to play. He's bullshitting around. And, I mean, now it's more clear than ever. I think even the most average fan can see it, I would think. Yeah, I mean, and I've been extremely vocal about wanting him to get his money, and I still maintain the same stance. Unfortunately, I just feel as though it can't come from the Carolina Panthers. We have larger fish to fry than that. Very, very, in, in just in full transparency, very disappointed in what I've seen from Brian Burns this year. Me and Dunk, uh, Aaron Duncan went on record during the preseason, or excuse me, during training camp, and said we both felt like with EJ coming in and with the new scheme, we felt as though Brian Burns would benefit significantly and we felt as though this was going to be a career year for him. Week one, I thought it maintained my stance. I thought it was going to be a career year from him. Ever since then, he's been MIA. Nowhere to be found. APB. Yeah. That that and, and it's disgusting, really, because it's a contract year. Like, so if this is what we were going to get, bit bro, respectfully, you should have just held out because, like I told Kenny this morning. The guys that come to the top of my head with Bosa and Jones from Kansas City, they held out and they got their bread. So if this is what we were going to have to deal with, then respectfully you should have just held out. And it's more disgusting when – because there's been a lot of talks about, oh, we could have did this instead of getting Bryce, did that, did that. But in transparency – you could have fucking got rid of Brian Burns and got Bryce some fucking help. That's yeah. what you could have done. That's what you should have done. And now you completely fucked yourself up by by doing that, by keeping a nigga here, and then you really have no other direction to go. Pay the nigga or let him walk, which it seems pretty obvious amongst us three what should happen. But Unfortunately. I mean it's a lot of it's a lot of different things that this organization has did even over the past couple of weeks, months, that have just been, I mean, a fucking shit show. And so. that is a perfect segue to where I want to go next. Scott Fitterer. <laughs> Let's go here real quick. <sighs> this tweet comes from Panthers on Tap. Shout out to them on Insta on Twitter. I don't know them niggas. I don't fully be seeing everything they do. I think they do a podcast. Not sure. Shout out to y'all. I mean, no harm by nothing. But um, it says Scott Fitter has blood on his hands. Um, in parentheses, it says, I'm sure I missed a few. And here's the list. Trade a second, fourth, and sixth round pick for Sam Darnold and accept his fifth-year option before he even played it down. Let Gilmore and Reddick go. Trade up for Matt Corral to only cut him a year later. Sign Cam Irvin, Pat F. Line, first day of free agency. Trade third-round pick for C.J. Henderson. Decline two first-round picks for Brian Burns and then not sign him a long-term deal. Trade up for D.J. Johnson. Day two and three draft pick failures. I mean, those are documented. Do your own research if you don't know. And then 2023 free agency busts besides them. Whether you want to blame Matt Rule or not for some of these, he was the GM. Now, I've been extremely vocal about Matt Rule and the the, uh, power that I believe Dave Tepper had over or or gave Matt Rule to make a lot of these decisions. But, I mean, unfortunately, it's undeniable at this point that Scott Federer has played a significant role in the downfall of the Carolina Panthers over the last three, four years. And I, I don't say five. Because I believe Marty Hardy was the GM when Dave Tepper uh, gained ownership over the team. So I'm not going to give him that year. But the last three or four years, Scott Fitterer does have a part to play. So, I, I mean, I take this this time as an opportunity to tell y'all that I was wrong as fuck this offseason. And to apologize to Terrence. Because I was on his top. Yeah, I, I've been trying to hold that nigga to the fire for so long. 
and niggas been trying to shoot him so much, Bill. But like I said, like previously, there's just no way you're in that position. And then you can tell me that you have no kind of decision-making power on what's been going on. Like Matt Rule has taken complete control over your decisions and he's right, right-hand right man to Dave Tepper and you're just sitting back looking like a bitch and nothing's happening. But then as soon as Matt Rule leaves, <laughs> you it's all hands on deck with you now and you still dick it. So, yeah. 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 I mean, <laughs> the Brian Burns situation, you can just look directly at that. And just see that this organization is in disarray. That in itself is enough to fire a GM, in my opinion. I mean, yeah, I, and I totally agree. I totally agree because I, I really don't even want to get into it any deeper. But the fact that you didn't just go ahead and pull the trigger last year, last year should have been the fire sale. And that's where we dicked ourselves off. If we want to go back, look at this se- look at this season for what it is. But if we want to go back, not even all the way back to five years ago when I went on the little mini rant last week about all the mistakes that Dave Tepper as well as Scott Fitter have made. But if we just want to go back last year, look at last year, and look at the opportunity for what we had on the table for Brian Burns, like that shit is sick as hell. Like, you turned down two first-round picks. Like, bro, it's a lot of niggas in the NFL that's not getting traded for two first-round picks. A lot of premier talent that y'all niggas worship legitimately that's not going for one first-round pick. Did we even get a first-round for C-Mac? No. (laughs) We didn't even get a a first-round for the best running back in football. We didn't even get a first-round for him. And Rams was going to give us two of them bitches. And the Rams were willing to give you two of them bitches. For an underperforming edge. <laughs> you want to go back to last year. I want to go back to the trade deadline. At least you get something for the motherfucker. Get something. Because I think Baltimore was willing to give up a second and maybe a third or something like that. No, I, I will say this year I would have needed a first. Well, I, at least one. Unfortunately, you weren't getting a first this year out of nobody. But now you're not going to get shit. <laughs> you're either going <laughs> to. So could we have gotten a weapon at least, do you think? You At least a, a second option? You could have gotten... You weren't getting a first off rip, but you could have gotten whatever more than what the fuck you're going to get when it's time to make that decision whether we pay you or we let you fucking walk. In the grand scheme of things, you get nothing. You get nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What so, do you got, Jamie? You look like you have something. The fucking... Yeah, you, you got to get something. At this, The cover is bare. You got to buy some fucking groceries. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, what does it say? You can't make no fucking meal. I'm leaving here with something. <laughs> <laughs> nah, for real. <laughs> leaving nah, here with for something, real. And, and we left here with nothing. Yeah, and to, and to be honest, if we really, really want to have this conversation right now, <laughs> I hate to tell a lot of niggas, and I don't want y'all to act up when it happens. Don't be disrespectful, because a nigga has been the best defensive tackle in football, in my opinion, this season. But when DB go into that office, he going to be talking Aaron Donald money. Hate to tell y'all niggas. Hate to tell y'all. And I know I'm going to get slandered. I don't give a fuck. Y'all been doing it to me for the past two and a half years, two years since we done started this fucking podcast. Y'all been, and y'all going to continue to slander me? Cool. Hate to tell y'all, but Panthers front office, Panthers fans, when that nigga Derrick Brown go in that office, just know Nigga, you got to give me AD money. Yeah, I mean. I hate to tell you. I don't think you're wrong there. I, I've actually, I've seen some people talking about that as well. I mean, and when you think about it, there's not a lot of D tackles that's been playing better than Derrick Brown this year. Not really any. Because I can't really name one. <laughs> not really and any. I ain't watched the Rams enough to know what AD been on. He ain't been on that. And <laughs> when I seen Derrick Brown shake – Two times in one game, chasing a nigga down the field, damn near 10 yards past the line of scrimmage. I mean, fuck. Now, he looks you. like somebody that's in the contract year. Yeah, exactly. And so, <laughs> then, I'll, I mean, you guys can answer if y'all want, but I will, I'll leave the viewers with a question. If you're left to pick beside, between who you want to tag, we'll take Jeremy Chin out of the conversation, right? And we'll just say we have these three guys. We have Frankie, we have BB, and we have Derrick Brown. 
let's take Jeremy Chin out of the situation because I thought even in the off season this year that Jeremy Chin was going to be a uh, it was going to be a fatality, unfortunately, right? So let's take Jeremy Chin out of the equation because my understanding is he won't be a Carolina Panther at the end of the season. If, if specifically if EJ is still going to be the defensive coordinator. Because I don't know if he's done enough to get a head coaching job or not. I don't know. That's just my opinion. So I, let's just say that Jeremy Chen, for the sake of the conversation, is going to be a casualty. Right? And you only want to pay one nigga. Right? And the other one, you're going to use a tag. Out of the three, who the fuck do you pay and who do you tag? Because I think we all already agreed that Brian Burns can't get no more out of us than about 26 and a half to 27. And even that is pushing. Yeah, I don't even know if I can get a nigga that much. Cool, cool. So do you go ahead and give Derrick Brown that, that AD money or do you tag the nigga? Because to me, those are your only that's 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 the situation. Because you're you have to pay you have to pay Frankie. You have yeah, to pay you, Frankie because you're not gonna use you're not gonna use your franchise tag on Frankie. You don't have to. No, you don't have to. You can let Frankie walk. You have to pay Derrick Brown, though. You ha- I was about to say, you have to pay Derrick Brown. So you can't use the tag on Derrick Brown. So then you use the tag on, on Brian Burns? After what we've seen this season? Is that what we want to build off foundationally? Uh, honestly, the, the I think at this effort? point, you have to. You have to use it because you can't. Like, you looking at it from an organizational perspective and, like, a GM perspective, you got you can't lose that guy for nothing. When you could have had him, you know, you could have either traded him or had him under contract already. So, and then you've gotten piss poor effort out of him this year. Bitch, go back on that field and try again. <laughs> Franchise tag, go try again. We're gonna we're gonna try this one more time, and we're either gonna get something for you, or then we'll let you walk. But you're gonna put your body on the line for this organization one more time. But if you tag him, if you tag him, who's gonna be? I don't even know how that works. I don't even know if you can trade a guy that's on a tag. You can't, but you're not. You don't. You don't tag him with the intention to trade him. You tag him with the intention to either sign him to a long term deal next off season or officially let him walk a year from now. But you don't have enough in draft capital, enough pull in the free agency market. You don't have enough anything anywhere to allow a player like Brian Burns to walk out the door. And honestly, if we have to go that route, I'm to the point. I don't feel bad for Brian Burns no more. You put yourself in this situation based off of the the piss poor effort you put up and it hasn't had shit to do with injury to my knowledge. It's been a few nicks here and there and as dominant as I seen you look in fucking training camp with my own two eyes is not the same Brian Burns that you went into the season looking like. Yeah, so, because he, I was going to combat that by saying, yeah, but he was going up against a shit O-line. Yeah, it was, but he yeah. Was, no, he was, but he was obliterating the Jets yeah. when they came to this. When they came to Spartanburg for that one day, they said he was dicking them niggas. And I haven't seen him look as explosive as he did just since fucking training camp. And that shit was damn near unbelievable to watch just the way that he was moving out that bitch. Yeah. And then you just... To where your coach has to be like, nigga, you don't even need to be on the field right now because we're trying to run offense. Even though I know that we have a shit O-line, it should never be a situation to where a coach should say that because you have a player that dominant. Well, you would want to say that as a coach because you have a player that dominant, and there's no way that player gets on the field this year and give out the performance Brian Burns has been giving out. Yeah, no, absolutely not. Because even, I mean... They, because like I said, I mean, I'm cowboy, so of course I'm gonna say it. But they talk, they said the same shit about Micah. But you see the translation, yeah. Like you see him winning, like that. The same way Brian Burns was winning in training camp, you see it translate to the regular season with Micah. But the translation hasn't happened with Brian Burns outside of Week One. And I, I, I don't, and I don't know if you noticed this, but I stopped bringing up Mike on this podcast because to me he's a generational talent, right? But to go on to that point. Right. I, I was watching the game with my pops on Thursday, uh, Dallas and Seattle. Even when that nigga ain't making plays, he's impacting the game. Right. And at the end of the game, when it mattered the most, and this has always been my problem with Brian Burns, always. You can attest to this because I was on it the whole season last year. At the end of the game, I legitimately, God strike me dead, let me swallow my tongue if I'm lying right now. Before that last play happens offensively for Seattle, I say it's Michael Tom. Legitimately, I sat back. I said, it's about time for bro to make a play. He said, who? I said, Michael. Absolutely dominates 
the fucking le- the uh the right tackle. They miss a fucking assignment. Whatever they did, however it happened, that nigga made an impact on the game. Ball game, Dallas win. Brian Burns has not shown me that this season. Maybe Brian Burns is not what we believed him to be. Maybe Brian Burns is benefit significantly, like Tavian mentioned last week, I believe, from having a guy on the opposite side of him so he doesn't have to have all of that pressure on him. But who did he have on the opposite side of him last year? Etor Gross Matos. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, even... So even that is just not shit. So maybe that, that stance can't even hold true. So it just makes me... To believe it's that an he it's an effort thing. He just he's doesn't want to fucking not be saying shit. Yeah, which is possible. He's either hurt and not saying shit, which I pray to God, Brian, if you're hurt, please say something so we can get off your top. Or yeah. it's just a lack of fucking effort. Yeah. Please say something to save your pockets, nigga. Yeah. Cause every every game you step on that field and you don't do a bitch ass thing, and I gotta read a stat sheet that say one on that motherfucker. Ho, ho, ho. One. Solo, nothing else, no pass breakup, no force fumble, no interception, no TFL, no sack. And, and when that bitch say what, and you got the same stat sheet as Alex Cook, it's a fucking problem. And I hate to tell you. And I really want to, like, even do a deeper dive into the numbers here. I want to see his pressure rate. Like, I really want to see his pressure rate this season. Because I see, feel like Let's see if we can pull it up real quick. All right, so... From what I'm seeing here is we got Brian Burns on the season has, according to ESPN, this is edge pass rush win rate rankings. Brian Burns has 122 plays. He's won 31 times for a pass rush win rate of 25%, and he's been double teamed 15% of the times. And now that's just like blind numbers for y'all, but I'm looking at this entire list of players and of the list that's shown, let's see, we have Michael Parsons, Miles Garrett, Bradley Chubb, Will Anderson, Jadavion Clowney, Hassan Riddick, Chase Young, TJ Watt, Samson, Samson Ebukamu, Ebu, um, Adrian Key, Bryce Huff, Trey Hendricks, Bouye Mafe, uh, Jonathan Green, Grenard, Leonard Floyd, Max Crosby, Josh Sweat, Nick, Nick Bosa, and Alex High, Highsmith. And Brian Burns has the least amount of wins on this list of everybody. And he's double teamed the second least behind Chase Young. So. And then I have something here as well. This is <clears throat> playerprofiler.com. So, I mean, I, you take that for what it well, for whatever it is. The website looks official, but. If you have a problem, you can do your own research, but I'm just going to see what I have here. Based on the metrics, niggas averaging 1.9 tackles per game solo, uh, 1.3 assisted. Sacks, he has five and a half on the year. That ranks number 27 in the league. Quarterback pressures, he has uh, 29. That ranks number 28 in the league. Um... Yeah, so, I mean, <laughs> every every metric that I see here, with the exception of solo tackles, solo tackles, he ranks 39th. Assisted tackles, he ranks 21. Uh, sacks, he ranks 27. Quarterback pressures, he ranks 28. TFLs, he ranks 7th. Run stuffs, he ranks 12th. And then, uh, yeah. And I also just want to clarify, because on this list, he is ranked 3rd, according to win rate percentage. But he also has the least amount of snaps played by anybody on this list by a pretty good margin. So I feel like that number is a little bit skewed as well. So he, he gets saying what the fuck. I was about to say he gets double teamed the least, second, second least, least, and he has the third highest win rate, but he has the least amount of plays. He's he's not playing very many snaps. Yeah, that that's not good. But he be tweaking out, bro. Randomly. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, long story short, I mean he he's he's performing this season like a mid tier guy. Yeah, he's performing like a jag. Pretty much, <laughs> he's hey. performing like just a guy. Unfortunately, like you you can't spend that much money on just a guy. So it's nasty work, brother. 